Okay, cool beans, cool beans. Cool beans, how y'all doing this evening? Yes. It is your boy Reverend JB back with another awesome battle plan for success. Yeah. Now, for all those who don't know me, I am the senior pastor of Jesus Christ Soldier Ministries. We believe in uh, being good and treating all people right, regardless Amen. of what name you call God. For we was all created by God, therefore we should all be respected and treated with love and such. Amen. Now, today's battle plan is a very personal one for me today. Uh, Pastor Park opened the door for the testimony. And had I stood up and gave my testimony, I wouldn't have had a battle plan to give y'all. <laughs> so I had to wait till it was my turn to get on the mic to do what I do. Yeah. Now, I apologize if I seem a little off this evening. I got a little bit of a sore throat. And y'all know how it goes. If your throat goes sore, your ears and your nose start working with you too. So I'm a tough on through it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're going to make this thing pop like popcorn. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, man. Popcorn. Popcorn! Hang on, y'all. Okay, just pull the funny one on me. Okay, cool, baby. All right. Now, today's title of the battle plan is called Patience. Amen. Now, before I pray, I just want to give you the statement that's going to wrap this battle plan on up for you, and I want you to remember it. Now, for all those who don't know, I am a teaching preaching pastor. Amen. So I'm going to throw a lot of scriptures at you this evening, but I strongly encourage you to feel free if you have any questions while I'm preaching. The floor is open. Amen. Ask and you shall receive as the word says. And like my granny used to say, a closed mouth don't get fed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, here's a statement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Daddy's working, baby. Daddy's doing the lowest work. All right, here's a statement. Sometimes you just have to wait, knowing it's already answered. Amen. Now, I know y'all asking me. Hold on, let me step around this podium. Wait a minute. My voice got even better. Y'all check it out. <laughs> Work with it. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of y'all asking about that statement. Well, sometimes in life, we'll pray. And we'll ask the Lord for stuff. And we'll hope for some things. And then it seems like we don't get what we ask for. Mm -hmm. And then we feel like the Lord don't love us. Or we feel like the Lord has let us down. Or we feel like we have sinned so much that we can't be redeemed. But see, that statement there and that thought process right there is completely inaccurate. Mm -hmm. For it don't go in line with the word. But see, if you go to certain places and you listen to certain people, they'll tell you that your works are what's going to get you in heaven. No, no, no. It ain't your works to get you in heaven. It's by the righteousness and the sacrifice that was paid by Jesus. See, uh, Jesus had to die. And for my family, y'all hear this often, so uh, <laughs> I apologize. I love each and every one of you. But, uh, Jesus had to die so that God's promises to man could be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go through trials and tribulations, the last thing we want to do is be Shh. The last thing we want to do is hold on. Mm -hmm. The last thing we want to do is sit still. Mm -hmm. This is my personal problem right here. Sometimes when I'm going through something, I don't like to shut up about it. <laughs> I want to talk about it. I want everybody to know but see, that's why I tell you, when you pray, you got to pray and you got to know that it's already been answered. Amen. For the Lord told us in the Bible that the Lord answers a righteous prayer. He also told us that the word, the word says that he will answer a sincere prayer. So that means that your prayer must be honest. A lot of people don't receive what they want in life because they can't wait for it. Mm -hmm. right. They they, they want to go out and make it happen. They want to say, you know what? I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to move over here. Or I'm going to rock and roll. Hold on. Got a little sweat in my eyeball. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, that's my hug. Oh, look at that. That's what I'm talking look about. Look at the yes. kids. Now, and I know you ask yourself, and you're sitting there, you're saying, well, I done had a lot of setbacks. I done had a lot of letdowns. Well, 
Today, we're going to explore mm -hmm. what the toolbox, that's my definition of the Bible. Because yeah. I'm a believer that the Bible is not only a word of God, mm -hmm. but it can also be used as a tool mechanism, like a carpenter uses a hammer to frame a wall. Yeah. Like a concrete man uses a concrete truck to, <laughs> to get his concrete from point A to point B, Amen. the final destination. See, the Bible is the same. Amen. It takes us from point A to point Z, yeah. which is the final destination. Amen. See, Jesus tells us, all through the Bible and in the Gospel of Thomas, that if you know the beginning, if you know the beginning, you already know the end with him. Yeah. So don't concern yourself with the end. Concern yourself with what's in the middle. Amen. And when I talk about the middle, I want to talk about the day you was born and the day that you die. Mm -hmm. Now we all got that question mark. Amen. Now, Amen. now I told y'all I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of a testimony. Well, huh. now that we got the formalities out way, I can be 110% myself. Check this out. The last couple of weeks for me have been trying. And when I say trying, I ain't talking about physically trying. Because see, the devil can't beat us but so much physically before the body will adapt to the pain. Before the body will make a shift and do what it needs to do to survive. Mm -hmm. So see, Satan likes to play with me on the mental field. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't do this for the money. I don't do this for the fame. And I don't do it for the name. I do it because I've been called to do it. Mm -hmm. So, the last couple of weeks, newborn baby, bills coming around the corner, <laughs> car broke down, uh, mm -hmm. brought another car up the road, had family issues, uh, had some personal things that occurred, and I was sitting there, and I was saying to myself, how did I get into this situation? But see, here's what I've learned, that when, say, and write this down, my beautiful people, when you feel under attack the most, that's when the good Lord is about to rage you up, he about to light a fire, he about to make some changes. So don't worry about the hardships. Because, see, today I'm going to teach y'all how to deal with the hardships. I'm going to take you to the toolbox and I'm going to let you see what's going on now. Now, see, here's the funny thing. And I was sitting there, Valentine's Day was coming around the corner. I got beautiful kids, daughters. So, you know, it's my job to show my daughters what a man is supposed to do. Amen. It is my job to be the head of my household. Amen. So if something goes wrong, it falls on my shoulders according to the word of God mm -hmm. to make it right. Amen. Now, and I will bend over backwards. I will lay down and mold. I will go up under the sink and come up looking like a slave and the whole nine. Yeah, man. You know all about that, don't you? Don't die. Don't, don't, don't be shy. It's to fix it. Yeah, it's okay to let that go. I'll do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I forget to wait. I forget to wait. But what if I told you? Well, let me ask you this. What would you do if you got to the point to where you felt like you couldn't carry on no more? Let me ask that for you one more time. What would you do if you get to the point to where you feel like you can't carry on no more. Well, my beautiful people, I'm going to move this back on around this podium right here. We're going to see what the toolbox says. Amen. Yes, you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot to finish all my testimony, y'all. I apologize. I got ahead of myself. Well, here's what happened. I did my brother-in-law's taxes. And then my sister was sitting there when she came to visit. She said, bro, she called me on the phone. It was late. It had to be about 10 o'clock. And she said, bro, what's wrong with you? You don't seem right. I said, no, I'm fine. I'm good. Because see, I've learned over the years that sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut. 
Because if you talk too much, the enemy knows your uh, plan of attack. He knows how to come get you. He know how to reach out and hurt you. So sometimes you got to trust in God and you got to walk solidly and you got to carry a righteous big stick. Well, she said, well, bro, you look like you had stressed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send $30 up the road because my sister stayed right down the road from me and around the corner. She said, I'm going to send you $30. Then, when her significant other got there, my brother-in-law, he handed me another 20. So, see, I was worried about gas for the car. But the good Lord blessed me with gas for the car. He gave me the ability to take $10 and take my beautiful wife-to-be out to breakfast on Valentine's Day. And then I was able, listen, I was able because I was patient. Because I, I waited. I said, you know what, Lord, I done done all I can do. Now I'm going to give it to you. Amen. In a matter of 15 minutes, the Lord took care of the problem that I've been worried about for months, days, and weeks. He neutralized just like that. Write this down. Even in trials and tribulations, you are not alone. Amen. All you got to do is ask the Lord. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. And tell the Lord what the problem is. Yeah. You ain't got to say it to me. You ain't got to say it to nobody else. All you got to do is just simply say inside your head, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. Be honest. Be sincere. But then here's the most important part. You got to wait. Let's turn to the book of Romans, chapter 12, or the 12th verse. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be consistent in prayer. Now, let's look at that word tribulation. And let's look at the word consistent. Okay, this tells us right here that when you're confused and you don't know which way to go, all you got to do is sit there and talk to Jesus. Amen. All you got to do is sit there and say, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth. And just talk. And see it says right here. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. That means. Uh, be, be, be happy. When you're going through what you're going through. I want you to know. That in the name of Jesus. It's already been taken care of. See I'm going to proclaim that. Right here right now. You ain't got to tell me what your problem is. You ain't got to tell me what your circumstance is. But what I want you to do, my beautiful people, is I want you to just simply say to yourselves right now, I want you to activate that power. I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. And I want you to tell the Lord what it was bothering you. Let's go on to Romans chapter 8, verse 25. Now, like I tell y'all all the time, my beautiful people, uh, this is my interpretation. Or what the word says. So please go back and read it for yourself. Amen. For we all know that the Bible is a living book. Because it is the only book that where 12 people can read the same lines and come up with 12 different reasons why. This is what gives the Bible its power. This is what gives the toolbox what it needs. Amen. But let's look at Romans uh, chapter 8 verse 25. But if we hope what we what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Now this right here is a is a promise from God. This lets us know right here, real quick, fast in the hurry, that we got to wait. More importantly, it lets us know that uh, when you're in your trial and your tribulation, or I got to run in my notes like this, you must continue doing what is right. Don't just get stuck. So this means that as you travel along and you walk this path of hardship and you got trials and tribulations and you got problems that you go through, the Lord tells us right there in the scripture to continue to walk your path. Continue to do what is right. Don't just get stuck. Because let me tell you what happens when you become impatient. You move too fast. And when you move too fast, you're going to slip up and make a mistake. 
It's going to be a tiny mistake. But that mistake is going to make you understand something real quick, fast, and hurt. It's going to bring you a hundred more. It's going to bring you a hundred times further down than when you was when you got started. So this is what I tell you what I mean. Do what's right. Uh, continue to live your everyday life. Continue to wake up with joy in your heart. If you can't yeah. find none, just take a step. And with every breath, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me make it another step. Amen. And then I want you to walk around, and I want you to say to yourself, hot dog, here we go again. Yes, Jesus, Lord. just let me make a, another step. If you got somebody in your life that's causing your problems and strife, when they come around, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, give me peace. Let peace be still. For we all know the Bible tells us that the disciples was on the boat, and there was a great storm, and they were scared they were going to die. And one of them asked Jesus, are you not going to do anything, or are you just going to sit here and let us die? He stood up with a calm demeanor, for he understood his power. Write this down. Even in your times of confusion, understand that you have power. For the promises of God have already been paid for by the blood of Jesus. So there's nothing that can't be taken care of. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Now here's what I want you to take out from this verse. All will come, not in our time, but on God's time. Because see, we are the type of creatures that when we feel like something's good for us, we, we, we want it. We want it right then. But see, Jesus won't give it to us because, see, we looking at the here and now. We ain't looking down the road. I, I see this commonly during tax season. Everybody goes out and they get a brand new car or they move into a house and then hot dog by, <laughs> by March, everybody's leaving. Because, see, we uh, don't want to wait for stuff. Because, see, we live in a society that's got instantaneous responses. Amen. We live in a zone in a time where it's no longer about the people aspect. It's not about the weight and the growth. See, it says, let us not grow weary of doing good. Amen. But see, let me add a little something to that. And this is not adding to the text. When, when he says, don't grow weary, that means don't you tear yourself up on the inside talking about, I can't make it. Don't run around and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, no. Don't run around and say, I don't know uh, how my kids are going to eat. I don't know how I'm going to get back and forth to work. I don't know which way I'm going to move. I don't know how <laughs> I'm going to pay this mortgage. No, what that line tells us this, and uh, it's, it's guaranteed right here in the same verse where he says, uh, you will get uh in due season. Now let's look at that phrase, due season. That that phrase, due season, means uh, that's God's time. That's when everything is going to line up. That's when everything is going to be in order. So see, if you just stand still and you let the Lord keep you in a holding pattern. Now I'm military minded, so for all those who don't know what a holding pattern is, I'll break it down for you real quick. That's when the soldiers are about to attack an objective. They're about to go in. But the commander says it's a holding pattern. That means, wait a minute. Let me uh, take a look. Let me uh, work some things out. Let me go ahead of you so I can check the path. Amen. But see, we are so busy trying to handle it ourselves that we ain't giving God time to fix the path. Yeah. We ain't giving God time to work it out. Amen. See, we ain't staying with God. We getting up. Head of God. Amen. And therefore, the word tells us that we shouldn't make a move until we seek counsel. Yeah. Now see, who is the greatest teacher of us all? Me. That's right, baby. Yes, you are. 
You're going to change the world. They're all three of you. Yes, yes, you too. Yes, all four of you and the beautiful wife to be. Hallelujah. But check this. All I'm saying is if you become impatient and you don't hold on, you're going to run into a trap. Now, see, Jesus tells us in the word that there's nothing that he hasn't already conquered. For he has conquered the greatest thing that fears all men. And the one thing that we're all scared of is death. Uh, the one thing, another thing that we're afraid of is loss. Uh, not achieving the unknown. See, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, he lost, but he gained. They took his life. <laughs> they thought they did But he gained this everlasting life mm -hmm. See everything that we go through My beautiful people is temporary And I want you to understand that It's temporary It's not going to last forever But if you run around And you get in a rush uh, Satan going to make sure It lasts a little longer You ever heard the phrase uh, The quickest way to somewhere is a straight line Now see this means That when you walk uh, the quickest way to get somewhere is not to go around a curve. No. It's to go from point A to point B as straight as possible. But see, sometimes when we don't wait on the Lord, we ain't got no navigation. Because God is the GPS satellite. Jesus is, is, is the voice that comes through. The Holy Spirit is the GPS device that you hold in your hand or that is in your car. For Jesus sent it back so that it may navigate for us. So he can keep us in line and tell us what to do. But don't you worry though. Because once you become patient and you keep doing what is good and you keep living your life, then I promise you it's going to turn around. Let's look at Psalm uh, chapter 37 verses 7 through 9. <coughs> Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over one who prospers in his way. Over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. That, that was Psalms 37, verse 7 through 9. I mean, verse 8. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath, for the evil door shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Now let's look at the verse number one. Let's let's back for just a second. It says, "Be still." Now that word "still" means be patient, be calm, be relaxed. Amen. I got you. If you learn nothing else from it this evening, my beautiful people, be patient because understand that God has you. Jesus has you. Yeah. Write this down. Wherever I'm at in this world, I am not alone, but Jesus has me. Yeah, yeah. Now, it says also in that verse, it says, before the Lord, wait patiently. Yeah. So this means once you get on your knees or you ride down the road and you say, in the name of Jesus, uh, I, I come to you in prayer and you say, and you take it to the Lord, he says, be patient. Means give it some time. Don't talk yourself out the game. Talk yourself in the game. Yeah. For we will cause ourselves to lose the battle before we even get on the field because we take ourselves out the game mentally because we forget who we are. Write this down. You are the sons and the daughters of God Himself, Amen. the living light source. That means that y'all are all princesses and princes in the Lord's kingdom. Yes. Everything in the Father's house should be given unto you, for it is your birthright. So I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that. It also says right here in the scripture, do not threat over the one who prospers. Now see, this is... Lord, okay, I thought it went out. Now see, this is where it gets funny for me. Because if you ever look at somebody else's life and you ask yourself, Woo, I wonder what they doing. Why can't I get there? I'm a much better person than them. Oh, oh, don't worry. No, it's all right. Don't be shy. Own it. Because I say it all the time. I used to. 
I used to. I used to look at everybody else's life. I used to say, you know what? I want that life. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. He said, do not fret over those who Amen. prosper in his way. Amen. This means that don't worry about those who are achieving doing it their way. Yeah. For it tells us right here that over, it says, over the man who carries out evil devices. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we'll think that when the Lord has called us to do something, that's Satan setting us up. Because, yeah. see, he understands that if we get if we already beat down, and we already broken, and we already destroyed, mm -hmm. he'll give us a little bit of false hope. Yeah. He'll give us a little bit of false truth. See, he'll, he'll, he'll let us think that everything's okay. So we'll take that leap of faith So because we think it's from God, but it's really from him. It says, refrain from anger and forsake wrath in verse number eight. Here's the kicker. It says, refrain from anger. Let me tell you something that I know about the word <laughs> anger. Anger is just one letter away from the word dangerous. Now, we all know that uh, the word dangerous means harmful. It hurts. It seeks to destroy. Now, it says right there that it says, uh, uh, forsake the wrath. So, let me put this in a little bit of practical application for you. When you're going through something, and you find yourself feeling like a loser, and you feel like you ain't going to never make it, and you broke down. He says, refrain from getting mad. For a man who is angry can't think straight. Mm -hmm. Write that down. Mm -hmm. If you angry, you can't think straight. Mm -hmm. Then it says, it tells us to forsake the wrath. So this means that I like to call it the no-get-back syndrome. Because uh, especially uh, in the African-American culture, we are firm believers that if you get me, I got to come get you. This is the wrong thing you want to do when you in the middle of a trial and tribulation when you try to have patience. Because every time you do something wrong to somebody else it's going to come back to fight you. When you think you're going to make it, you ain't going to make it but so far. When you feel like you are ahead and then something's going to come along going to knock you off your feet. That's because you, you gave in to the wrath. You gave in to the anger. You took away your ability to think, and then you just reacted. Never make a move until you think you through. That's what patience is all about. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. And uh, supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Now, let's look at the first line there. It says, do not be anxious about anything. This means do not worry about anything. Short and simple. Don't allow yourself to stress about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So this means that when you're going through something and you and you down and out, I'm going to say it over and over again because I want you to understand how easy it is to get out of something. How easy it is to have patience. Because see, you got Jesus. Jesus has already solved the problem. Yeah. I'm going to say that over and over again until I drive it in your head this evening. I don't know why the Holy Spirit got me saying that right there, but I'm going to tell you. He says do it uh, in prayer. That means that when you when you need patience and, and you're just trying to find your way through, constantly just talk to Jesus. Substication means to uh, add to what you're doing. Amen. So don't just talk to Jesus and sit down and, and wait for a magical pill. For nowhere in the Bible did it say Jesus is going to give you a magical pill. He's going to give you a one hit a quitter. Now what he tells you is that once you are on my team, you're going to go through some trials and tribulations. But don't you worry. I got you. Amen. He said, don't stress yourself, for I already have the answer. Amen. He said, don't worry about the enemies, because I've already defeated them. Yeah. For I know the prince of false truth. Amen. I know the liar. He was created by my father. Mm -hmm. 
He says, but be in thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. Short and simple, my beautiful people. When you're, when you're going through something and you've got to figure out a way how you're going to make it through, sometimes all you got to do is tell Jesus. Mm-hmm. And when you tell Jesus, just be patient. Yes. And just wait. Mm-hmm. Like this. Because, see, my life <laughs> is very funny. I, I always wanted to be the CEO of something. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to be the man. I always wanted to be the center of attention. I guess that was my personality trait. And see, I spent many years uh, doing it my own way. I lost a lot of money doing it my own way. I, I, I damaged myself, my self-esteem for many years because I wanted to go do it my way. Yeah. So then I gave in to what other people say. See, see, I listened to those who said I wasn't going to never amount to nothing. I listened to those who told me that I couldn't accomplish my dreams. I listened to those who said, you know what? You disabled. What you even want to do about it? Even when it came time for me to preach, because my life wasn't always perfect, I heard this right here. Uh, don't get up there and play with the Lord. Don't do it. You know you fall from righteousness. How many of us got them kind of people in our life? Want to be real quick to tell you what you ain't doing right, but don't want to don't realize they own do this thing. <laughs> like my granddad used to say, don't talk about somebody else's joy till you clean your own. Amen. <laughs> till you clean your own. Amen. And see, I, I live by them creeds. I live by them words. I wasted 15 years of my life being unhappy because I was disabled, because I seen it as a weakness. Instead of a strength. But see, let me tell you what the Lord did for me. Uh, I'll never forget it. I was about 29 years old. And I realized I had lost $100,000. Gone. And I had everybody talking to me. Everybody telling me what they would have done if they would have got the money. Now see, these are the same people who taught me my bad money management to begin with. Because like my son right there, he has no fear. He has no doubt. For he comes from the Father's house. See, so everything that we learn, we get taught. But see, here's the kicker. I, I found myself thinking about suicide. I wanted to end it all. Because that's how much hatred and anger I had towards me because I lost that money. Just stick with me here for a second. But see, a few years down the road, I had to struggle. I had some hardships. But let me tell you what them hardships do for it. It builds the character. See, because when you're going through something, you got to have patience. I want you to understand something, my beautiful people. Everything that you do gives you a new tool from heaven Mm -hmm. to accomplish what you need. You ain't going to ever pray to God or to Jesus Mm -hmm. and not get a response. Mm -hmm. The word just told us that uh, it ain't going to come on our time. It's going to come on God's time. Amen. So see, I stayed patient. And I waited. And I got on my knees and I said, Jesus, I have blank, 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 my life. I have made a fool of myself. I have made a mockery of everything you've done for me. So from now on, Jesus, I'm going to do it your way. He said, uh, I said, uh, and then every morning I woke up, I said, Jesus, Come to you in prayer. Yeah. I surrender myself to you. Amen. You be the voice of my voice box. You be the vibrations that come out of my mouth. Yeah. You be a uplifting to me. Mm-hmm. Cause see, the only thing that you really need to understand about being patient is accepting what is your fault. Yeah. Accept what you do. Cause a lot of things that Satan does is he uh, he allows our minds to be tricked. And this is dangerous because when you got to have patience or you got to hold on, your mind is where the enemy is going to attack you. Yeah. He done already took care of your physical. He done already put you in a bad situation uh-huh. because you might have made a slight mistake. But let me just go on off the script right here and say this. Uh-huh. Every mistake you make, it does not matter. Uh-huh. For Jesus has already died for that mistake. Uh-huh. God is already loving you. 
God has already forgiven you. Already. As soon as you open your mouth and repent of your sin, which basically means in the name of Jesus, I ask for forgiveness. It's already forgiven. Amen. So I need y'all to reach down inside yourselves, and I need you to forgive yourselves. Mm -hmm. We all got things that we need to forgive ourselves for. Mm -hmm. I made some mistakes. Amen. But see, until you forgive yourself for making mistakes and allowing other people to hurt you and stay in a situation that you shouldn't have done and doing things you shouldn't have done, because see, God has already forgiven you. But man will never let you forget. See, that's Satan's tool. He uses you against you. So take you out the equation and put Jesus in his place. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. <laughs> now I got to roll down in my notes like this. When hell breaks loose, be humble and kind. <laughs> and that's all that scripture is telling us. Bear with one another. This means deal with one another. Uh, accept someone for who they are. How they are and the way they present themselves. But when it's all said and done, the worst thing you can do in the middle of a situation where you need patience mm -hmm. is to be negative and act like you got it going on because we all need a little help. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Amen. Plans for warfare and not for fear, or well, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Let's look at this. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. We don't know all the moving pieces to our lives, but Jesus does. You understand what I'm saying? So, it ain't up for us to make a decision. It's up for us to do like the meat goes and walk it like you're talking. That means that when, yeah, yeah, that all we got to do is walk. Because the Lord says he know the plan. Mm -hmm. He has for you. Mm -hmm. He says, the Lord plans for warfare, welfare. This means that the Lord has already put in your walk of life uh, your blessings. The question is, are you going to block them? Mm -hmm. By being angry. Mm -hmm. By talking too much. By not believing. Mm -hmm. See, Are you going to continue to walk around here and doubt God? Mm -hmm. or are you going to continue to walk around here and more importantly, doubt yourself? For if you don't believe that you're going to make it through, you ain't going to make it through. Mm -hmm. The body does what the mind does. And whatever you put in the atmosphere, write this down. Whatever you put in the universe is going to come back on you. So if you want to achieve, think achievement thoughts. Right. For I am a testimony of this today. Amen. Thanks to you, Pastor Park. And the lovely ministry you have built here. All I've ever wanted to do is get up in somebody else's pulpit <laughs> and preach. Amen. And you have given me that opportunity. Amen. So that's why when I come through, I got to show up show out, Amen. and then blow out. Because <laughs> if I don't, <laughs> I'm going to blow the roof off because I'm the crunk. <laughs> See, I'm excited. See, because when I started preaching, I was 15 years old. I took one or two verses and I ran with it. Mm -hmm. But let's move on up here in the current years. After I became a pastor, legally, a reverend that is, mm -hmm. I had the ability to marry you or bury you <laughs> or counsel you. Uh, I, I found myself when I started, I was running around to other people trying to figure out how I was going to do it. And that beautiful lady sitting over there with that sexy purple on, looking oh so scrumptious that I love oh so much. She said, babe, have you looked in your office? Now see, in my office, I got a whole digital recording studio. 
I got computer screens with webcams and high definition. Now, I'm not boasting and I'm not bragging, but I just want to tell you, that's what the Lord's done done for me. See, he set me up back in 2009 when I thought I was going to be the next Puff Daddy. <laughs> I thought I was going to be the next Timberland. I wanted to be the next Barry Gordy. I wanted to make music and I wanted to put a stamp on it. And I wanted everybody to know my name. Because I did it. See, I couldn't get out of my own way. Mm -hmm. But see, I spent that money. Business went belly up. But let me tell you how the Lord turned it around. I use that same equipment every day for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. I preach on it. I make what I call forever videos to help you remember your loved ones when they pass or happy moments. Feel free to contact me after service and uh, we'll talk about it. We see that I want you to understand that if you're patient, the Lord will take a negative and will make it a positive. Amen. That's what that scripture tells us. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Boy, I got a lot of scriptures in here, don't I? got a point to it. Yes. Uh, now, this is my personal favorite. Now, I, I got this one tattooed on my right arm. No, my left arm. So when I feel weak in that arm, I remember Isaiah 40, 31. I ain't even got to explain this one. I'm going to just read this one. I want you to hear how powerful this one is. I want you to hear the promise of God in here. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm having a little fun that the spirit that jumped on me. But they shall the but they who wait on the Lord means those who pause. That's all. Those who pause shall renew their strength. This means that the Lord's gonna give you what you need to carry on. They shall mount up with wings. Like eagles. This means that he's going to give you the ability to fly. He's going to give you the ability to feel free. Mm -hmm. They will run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you will be able to move and you won't get tired. More importantly, you won't have no hindrance. So when you set yourself off to do what the Lord wants you to do, if you just stay in that holding pattern and let him work some things out for you. What he's going to do is he's going to make sure that you move uninhibited. He's going to make sure that where there was blocks, there's now breakthroughs. Amen. Where there was a hole, there's now solid ground. Yeah. Where there was a wall, there's now a, a, a tunnel. Amen. See what I'm saying? I'm going to be yeah. He says you will walk and you will not faint, meaning that you will live, but you will never die. Because you trust in him. Mm -hmm. Let's go to James. <laughs> chapter 1, verse 19. My Bible is called Hearing and Doing the Word. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. Amen. Simply put, my beautiful people, and this is the verse of the day, James chapter 1, verse 19. Write this down, highlight it, please. This is just simply how you're supposed to live your life and live according to the word of God. You should hear more than you speak. <laughs> and you shouldn't get angry about anything because you already went it. Even at the surface, you may be losing, but trust me, in the eyes of God, you already winning. He just ain't made it clear yet. Because, see, confusion is nothing but an unclear vision and promise of God. Write that down. Romans chapter 5, verse 4. An endure procedure. Char character... And characters produce hope, or character produces hope. To endure procedure means you must endure the process. Mm -hmm. 
And just like I told y'all earlier, it's, and as you endure the process, the Lord is going to give you one more tool. He's going to make you a little smarter, a little faster. He's going to help you get in better shape to accomplish whatever you have asked him to help you do. And it says character produces hope. Mm -hmm. So with improvement and the blessings and the tools that the Lord gives you, he gives you the ability to have hope, meaning that you can overcome. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 7, verse 9. Be not quick in, the, in your spirit to become angry, for anger longs in the hearts of fools. Uh, I touched on this earlier, and I'm going to say it again. Anger will destroy your blessings. Because mm -hmm. when you're angry, you got the double in your heart. When you feed the bad side instead of the good side. And here's the last thing I want you to know about anger. If you still at the point that when you get angry about things, this lets the Lord know that you're not ready to be out of that situation. Mm -hmm. So he's going to keep you there. So when that situation don't even bother you, and you can wake up with a smile on your face. All right. This is when the Lord is going to elevate you to the next level. He is going to deliver you from it. Because in order for you to get used to something, and deal with it and overcome it, you must endure it. Because, mm -hmm. see, I asked the Lord for patience one time. My washing machine broke. <laughs> my TV blew up. My house needed electrical. My roof was leaking. My floor fell in. <laughs> now, see, <laughs> ain't nothing going to tend to see you. So, write this down. Be careful what you ask the Lord for, because you just might get it. <laughs> but I tell you what, I learned how to be still. <laughs> I learned how to deal with the fact that I didn't have no money and I had to wait. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 7, verse 8. Better is the end of all things than it is in the beginning. And the patient in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Ephesians Ephesians chapter 7, verse 8. Oh, Ecclesiastes. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. They look the same right now. This blue ink. I apologize. Chapter 7, verse 8. Now, it's, it's funny, though, because this right here states what I said earlier. It's better in the end than it is in the beginning. Because when you start out, ain't nothing pretty. <laughs> but you get growth. So by the time you get to the end, you done made it to your promise. It also lets us know not to be afraid to ask for help, for we can't do it alone. Because it says, be patient in the spirit, mm -hmm. better than the proud in the spirit. Amen. So it's better for you to be calm and patient. Mm -hmm. and I, I want it now, and I can't be beat. I can't be unstoppable. Because pride will kill you faster than anything. All right, here's a few things I want y'all to do, and then I'm out. I'm done. The doors of the church are open. All right, the first thing I want you to do is make sure you really want to be delivered or whatever it is you want in life, make sure you really want it. Because until you truly believe it in your heart, the Lord is not going to hear your prayer. In other words, be sincere. Mm -hmm. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with everybody else around you. Mm -hmm. See, because the one thing somebody hates that's trying to bring you down is when you already tell them everything that they was about to jump on you about. I do it all the time with my mama. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> with my mama. She'll tell me that, okay, something dirty. Well, I'm like, hey, I'm on crutches. Mm -hmm. You know? You understand what I'm saying? Next thing I want you to do is when the process yeah, starts, Talk to Jesus. Amen. And here's the second part of that. Not only do I want you to talk to Jesus and say in the name of Jesus to just open your heart and talk to him, but I want you to stand strong on what you know. So if you know you've prayed about it, 
And you know you are a child of God. Yeah. And you know you are in your father's kingdom. And you know you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you know that your sins have been forgiven. And you know that God has already delivered you and brought you through. Stand on it. Amen. Don't let nobody, nobody break it down. Amen. Don't let nobody try to change your mind. For well, see, we live in a world where everybody's got opinions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, like my baby used to tell me, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody got one. But that don't mean it's meant for you. Write that down. Write that down. Not the butthole point, though. <laughs> Write down that everybody got an opinion. <laughs> but that don't mean it was right for you. I told you, man, I'm transparent, my beautiful people. What you see is what you get with me. Uh, you come to my house on Monday, I'm at the same way. Might be slightly more loose because <laughs> I ain't working that day. Uh, so uh, what you see is what you get. I'm being real here because I ain't going to never, never, ever, ever tell you to do something that I ain't done myself. Because see, how are you going to tell somebody something? How would I be if I stand up here and tell you how to overcome something if I ain't never going through it? Because see, you got to feel the sincerity. You got to feel the realness. So when you go and you talk to Jesus, let him feel it. If you're mad when you pray, be mad. Don't try to quote the Bible. Damn, the Bible was wrote by everybody that hung around Jesus, but it wasn't wrote by Jesus. It was wrote by his disciples. And they didn't get everything. Understand that. And then it was dictated by men. Crooked men. So, when you know something, know it. Because when I know something, I know it. And it takes an act of Congress to get me to change my mind. You got to come with evidence. You got to come with proof. Because, see, I know Jesus got me. Mm -hmm. And I know, uh, I may say out of my mouth something else, but I know the Lord going to hold me down. Amen. And the last thing I want you to do is when you're in the process, because <laughs> you done asked for that patience, or you want to make it through something, keep marching. Because mm -hmm. when it gets broke, the worse it gets, the worse it is. The more, you know what I'm saying? The more it's worth for you. Because mm -hmm. you always going to come out better than when you went in. Write that down because you got Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, my beautiful people, the doors of the church are open. Uh, I don't like to leave a broadcast without giving somebody in the room opportunity to accept Jesus. And if you have accepted Amen. Jesus and you want to unlock that power and you want to be able to call on that name, I just need you to repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. Father, I repent of my sins. Mm -hmm. I ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive me for my sins. Jesus, I declare and I speak out of my mouth and I confess out of my mouth that you are Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the dead. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. My beautiful people, if you said that simple prayer with me, welcome to Team JC. And not only did you come to Team JC, let me tell you what you got. You got happiness. You got joy. You got salvation. Salvation means grace. This means you got socks when you need it. You got a roof when you need it. You need somebody to talk to a companion, you got it. That's what salvation means. Salvation means you can take dice and roll them across the floor and money gonna fall out of somewhere. Understand that. It's more about going to heaven or hell when you die. It's about living your good life here on earth. Because believe it or not, there's a touch of heaven on earth and that show is a whole lot of hell on earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Thank you all.